During times of crisis, people often turn to music for solace and inner peace. The isolation and uncertainty resulting from the current pandemic has led many people to search more deeply for meaning and comfort through music. In looking at the outbreak of the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 to 1920, I have discovered an often forgotten German romantic composer who has conveyed much heartfelt expression through his three organ sonatas and three tone poems for organ. As he lay dying at the age of 64 in a distant clinic in Samedan, Switzerland, I wonder if the text of the chorale Philip Wolfren used in his first organ sonata came to his troubled mind. Composing his Opus 1 three decades earlier, he inscribed each movement with a strophe of the death chorale, Wenn mein Stunlein vorhanden ist, when my last hour is close at hand. However, he did not use the chorale tune usually associated with this text, but instead created his own tune based on his interpretation of the effect of the text. Here are some clips of all three movements of Sonata I played by Martin Sander on the Jan organ at Konzerthalle Bamberg. The original German chorale text by Nicholas Hermann, 1560, is shown in English translation by Catherine Winkworth. 1869. Still strongly entrenched in an influential music career in Heidelberg, why was he in a small town with population of 1,500 during a major pandemic? Well, due to a kidney ailment, he had been advised to take a cure in a renowned clinic in Samedan in Swiss Upper Engadine. Although initially seeming to recover, he succumbed to death on May 8, 1919. Although his cause of death is listed as kidney failure, it is possible that during the crisis of the Spanish flu outbreak, the H1N1 virus of the pandemic also contributed to his demise. Let's look at how this might have been possible before discovering more about Wolfram's contribution to organ literature as well as to hymnology, church musicianship, and the Bach revival. According to the website SwissInfo.ch, the so-called Spanish flu pandemic of 1918 to 1920 was one of the most devastating demographic catastrophes in Swiss history. 25,000 people reportedly died from the flu, but half of the entire Swiss population was infected during the course of the two years it swept through the country in four waves. Mortality was highest outside of urban areas and particularly in mountainous regions, probably due to the unsanitary conditions in the makeshift and overcrowded treatment facilities. Every clinic that was available, every hospital and even school was in use trying to cure the afflicted. Although much less was known 100 years ago about how to prevent the spread of infectious disease or how to treat or cure them, people were urged to disinfect everything in their homes and the entire nation was on a lockdown quarantine. There was nowhere to seek solace, comfort or peace. Schools, churches and marketplaces were all closed. Concerts and theater performances were canceled. The pandemic brought Switzerland to the brink of civil war over the inadequacy of the government response. Eerily reminiscent of today's pandemic outbreak, isn't it? 
The CDC estimates that about 500 million people, or roughly one-third of the Earth's population, were infected by the H1N1 influenza virus during the years of 1918 to 1920. It was during this disastrous period that Philip Wolfram, with weakened immune system, died in an overcrowded rural Swiss clinic. Sadly, far from his home in Heidelberg, his grave was in a small cemetery in Samadan and has since been overcome by renovations at the turn of the 21st century. However, a memorial plaque still hangs in the Heidelberg Pierskirche near the organ which he helped to specify. Lest we forget his contributions to music and particularly to the organ world, let's take a further look at both his career and particularly his three organ sonatas. Born on December 17, 1854, in Schwarzenbach am Wald in Upper Franconia, as the son of a cantor, he began early in his father's footsteps. It was from him that he received his earliest musical training and even was able to play the organ for church at the age of nine. After completing the Royal Teacher's Seminary in Altdorf near Nuremberg, followed by two years as an assistant teacher at the Royal Teacher's Seminary in Bamberg, he received a scholarship from the Bavarian State to study at the Royal Music School in Munich from 1876. It was there that he studied organ and composition with Joseph Reinberger, piano with the Liszt student Karl Barmann, as well as choir singing and conducting with Franz Wollner. He later studied with Hans von Bülow at the Meininger Hofkapelle. As a 24-year-old musician, he attracted national attention as a soloist, composer, and conductor. It was during these years that he composed the three organ sonatas. His Opus 1, the Sonata in B minor for organ, found an enthusiastic reviewer in the Liszt student Alexander W. Gottschalk. A first work like the author has never occurred during his long critical career. All respect for such talent, as well as such teaching success a la Reinberger. We wholeheartedly welcome the young artist as a composer and are pleased to introduce him to the public. We can see the influence of Joseph Reinberger particularly in his first two sonatas, evident in the cyclical rounding achieved by the recurring themes and in the structures and extended harmonic language used. Reinberger himself was influenced in his 20 organ sonatas in 20 keys, of an intended set of 24 in all keys, by his predecessors of the genre, Mendelssohn, Ritter, and others. His stylistic Tribute is complete with the dedication of the first sonata to Reinberger. Another romantic element used by Wolfram and reminiscent of Ritter's organ sonatas and made famous in Liszt's Prelude and Fugue on BACH is the declaratory unison statements of the subject in all voices. In both of the first and second sonatas, he structures the final movement as a fugue. This is particularly important to note as he was the widely read author of a biography of J.S. Bach as well as a promoter of Bach's music and the founder of the Bach Association of Heidelberg. It is also interesting to note that just as Bach set many things in groups of three, Wolfram also grouped this set of organ sonatas as a group of three with one and three in minor keys and two in major. It is fitting that he dedicated his third sonata to Brahms, with unlimited devotion, as his stylistic influence is much more keenly explored in that work. The melancholic disposition echoing Brahms's third piano sonata, rich Brahmsian harmonies, and final movements structured as a set of chorale variations on Herrgott, Nuschloss, den Himmel auf bring more of Brahms to mind than Reinberger. The first movement of his third sonata, Opus 14, in F minor, begins un poco grave with a heart-wrenching effect created by the four-note descending rhetorical catabasis figure found in Bach's Nun komm der Heidenheiland, BWV 599 from the Orgelbuchlein, orally depicting the condescension of Christ to come to the earth. After the declamatory statement of the next theme in octaves, he brings in a new idea with triplets in a tranquilo section reminiscent of perhaps Bach's in Dolce Jubilo from the Orgelbuchlein. We then hear each theme and mood return before the triumphal combining of the two main themes at the conclusion of the first section after a gentle and flowing middle movement. Wolfram's third movement is a set of variations based on the Lutheran chorale Herrgott Nuschloss den Himmel auf 
Oh God, now unlock your heaven, my time is coming to an end, which was also set by J.S. Bach in BWV 617, also in the Orgel Buch line. We see from these descriptions that Wolfram embraced his Protestant German heritage by synthesizing both Bach's stylistic characteristics as well as his romantic compositional forebears. Not only did he work closely with such contemporaries as Joachim, Wagner, Strauss, Busoni, and Sibelius, but he closely collaborated with Max Rager. They gave joint concert tours on which they mainly played romantically arranged works by Bach. They arranged concert engagements for each other, and Wolfram frequently featured Rager's works prominently in the music festivals he directed. Many of the performances both gave in Heidelberg were played on the Balker organ of the Peterskirche Heidelberg, inaugurated two years earlier. Wolfram taught initially at the Theology Seminary in Heidelberg University. In 1894, he was awarded the title of University Music Director, and in 1907 became General Music Director, holding that position until the end of his life. He was responsible for founding and directing five music festivals in Heidelberg, as well as the Bach Choir, still in existence today. He hosted the Tonkunstlerfest of the Allgemeiner Deutscher Musikverein in 1901, and ten years later the entire celebration of the ADMV on the 100th birthday of its founder Franz Liszt and on the 50th anniversary of the association. In 1890, he published the seminal and still in print, The Origins and the Initial Development of the German Protestant Hymn. As mentioned earlier, he was also the author of a Bach biography. Wolfram was also influential in promoting the rhythmically variable folk song-like hymns, in contrast to the isometric hymns that moved uniformly in the same note values common in most local churches of the time period. He is also widely known for his work in championing the role of the professional church musician, promoting appropriate payment structures and in-depth preparatory university education for church organists. He was responsible for specifying three organs in the Heidelberg area. Music in this documentary was played primarily on one of those, the 1903 Heinrich Voigt & Sons Durlach organ in the Heidelberg City Hall the oldest German concert hall instrument still in use today. This organ was restored in 1993 by Bluchos, true to the original, and is one of the outstanding examples of late Romantic organ architecture. These sonatas were performed by Martin Sander, who as a new teacher at the University of Heidelberg a decade ago, wanted to perform music by his predecessors at that school. He found only two organ composers from that school, Arnold Schlick in 1500, and Philip Wolfram around 1900. Here is the disposition of the Stadthalle organ. Along with his widely known Weihnachtsmysterium, Opus 31 choral work, his organ works add to the rich history we have of music of the German Romantic era, and particularly of the organ sonata genre. Let's take a last look at the Lutheran chorale that he selected for the theme of the final movement of his third organ sonata and contemplate that text and how remembering those beloved German chorales used in his earlier music must have given him comfort in his last days during a time of uncertainty and solitude. 